Sabbath, everyone. Happy Sabbath. Sabbath. Shall we have a silent word? Amen. Right. Happy Sabbath once again, everyone. Happy Sabbath. Um, this morning, Romario was going over some nice thoughts and showing the, the system of Greece and the mystery of iniquity and, uh, and the battle that we have to fight. And one of the things we want to understand that the, that the battle is really in us, that, 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 like he was saying, the battle in the mind, um, the, 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 the warfare that's taking place, all the scriptures is about the battle that's waging in our mind. And this week, Romario was going over the voice of God, and there's, there's three ways he mentioned that we hear God's voice, the Bible, the conscience, and um, providence. And, and God's, all three of those is going to be needed in the conflict that we're going to face at the Sunday Law. And, and we, have to, we have to learn how God speaks through all three of these things now. Um, and he, he's doing it. He literally does speak to our conscience, you know. He, but we can't, we can't distinguish his voice. What helps us do that is the Bible. The Bible is the natural and the conscience is the spiritual. So by understanding the Bible, we'll be able to understand how he speaks to our conscience. Amen? Amen. And by understanding that, we'll be able to recognize how he works in prop because the Holy Spirit, if he's talking to your conscience, will tell you that's the providence of God. And then you, no one won't understand it but you because you have the voice of God speaking in you. Amen? Everyone's following? Okay, praise God. I don't want to leave anyone. So now what I want to, to show is introduce. Sun and I have been talking about this all week. From what I understand, I believe we're right here at the, at the midnight cry. Um, these are the midnight cry, right? Every, we, we can go over the old stuff. Um, I'm just refreshing our brain, introducing this because I'm going to tie this to Daniel 11. Um, because we open up the fifth day of the fourth month going over what? Daniel. Yeah, and then we saw Daniel 11, what? Three. three. And then when we got here to Daniel 11, three, let's, I want to read something. Go to Luke. Go to Luke. Matter of fact, let's look at Luke 4 first. Go, to, go with me to Luke 4. And it's this nice thought that the Lord brought to, to mind, Luke 4. Um, just go down, to, go down to verse 6, 17. And we're going to read there. Luke 4, verse 17. It says, And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Esaias. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. He found where it was what? Written. written. Where will we find where it is written in regards to, to um, the midnight cry? In the Bible. Matthew 25. Amen. The place where, that's the place where it is written. Amen. And what does it say? Midnight. This is the midnight cry. And behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. Amen? We are going to find a place where it is written, and let's look at what it says. Verse 18, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath what? Anointed me to what? To preach the gospel to who? To the poor. Right here. What is Christ doing to the two on the walk to Emmaus? No, no, yes, but what is he doing? Anointing them. And what did they go do once they got here? They went to go give it to the poor. Y'all follow? Mm -hmm. So we have to recognize that we, we, in other words, we have to see for ourselves individually that we've reached this point. Y'all follow? Mm -hmm. Now, I'm only sharing this with y'all because I recognize for myself from the scriptures, we literally are right here. Mm -hmm. And it's a, it's, a, it's a revelation that God gives to you for yourself. 
that you have to get, you have to go and get from the Bible. Now, Sun and I was talking about it, and we're going to walk through the scriptures, showing some things, and he's going to go more in detail as um as 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 time progresses. But this this we really have to recognize this because once we reach this point, this point, what is it? What does the Bible teach us? We got to go forward, and how we got to go forward by faith. We have the midnight cry. What did they do at the midnight cry? They went forward. But what should we have been doing prior to this point? Going forward. Going forward. But what was the problem? We had, we had errors. Yeah, we yes, we had no, no serious faith. So the Lord, what does he do? Strengthen our faith so when we reach this point, we go forward. Yeah. But it's going to be a conflict when you reach this point. You're going to wrestle with yourself. You're going to wrestle with all. There's going to be all kinds of wrestling. Um, in order for you to do what? To go forward, because what in, in Exodus 14, what was before them? Exodus. What was behind them? Yeah. But they were at the midnight cry. Mm -hmm. They were because today this scripture was fulfilled in their ears. But their deliverance was right there. But their deliverance hung up on them exercising oh, faith. Yeah. Amen. Christ is showing us how to exercise faith when we recognize we stand up and preach, and we're not to be ashamed to say that we're sons of God. Y'all follow? But people are gonna people are gonna do what? Arise up against that because they're looking all the way down here. But I want us to see something now. Go with me. We're just gonna walk through our notes. Go with me to Matthew to Matthew four, not the notes of the Bible. Go with me to Matthew four. Go with me to Matthew four. It says. And let's look at verse 1. Then was Jesus what? Led up of the who? Where? Into the wilderness to be what? But, what? but go back one chapter. Go back one chapter to verse, to verse um, 15. Where it says 14. But John forbade, um, actually 13. Then cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto on, on John to be what? Baptized. Baptized. What was Christ doing right here? Baptizing, Baptizing them. And immediately they let up the spirit to go search for their brethren. Yeah. Where are their brethren? In the wilderness. Y'all follow? Yeah. Our brethren are in the wilderness. We are in the wilderness. And God, and God wants us to search. But we have to see this. We have to catch a glimpse of this. And then we will be willing to go seek out our brethren that's in the wilderness. In the wilderness of confusion, confused ideas and sins. But we will not fear what's before us. We will go forward by how? Faith. Yeah, everyone's following? We are literally at the midnight cry. That's where we are. We're at the midnight cry. Now, what are we, how are we going to recognize this? We got to go on our knees and ask the Lord to reveal this to us. We have to go on our knees and, Lord... Revealed because that's what happened on August 15th, July 21st, and August 15th. The believers went home, searched the scriptures, and the Lord revealed to them where they were, and by faith they had to go forward. Amen? Amen. But yeah, but it's gonna it's going to be a, a, a battle. So now go with me, as I said, Luke 24. I, I want us to see Luke 24 um, to read it for ourselves. In Luke 24, where Christ says. The two on the walk to Emmaus, verse 24, Luke 24, 24 says, And certain of them which were with us went to the sepulchre and found, and found it even so as, it, as, as the woman had said, but, but him they saw not. Then he said unto them, O fools and slow of heart to believe what? So, so what are you going to be preaching at the midnight cry? All what the prophets have spoken, because Christ anointed you to see all that the prophet says, oh, what does that mean? You're going to make connections like you've never seen before by all the prophets. Let me give you, let me give you one now. I'm just going to go through the stories because we're all familiar with these stories. Christ, he got baptized, right? What happened to him after his baptism? Immediately he was tested. Amen? Okay, so immediately Christ is tested. I want us to see something. That was both baptism. He got two baptisms. He got the former and the latter at the same time. Does anybody see it? Yeah. How did, go ahead, Swindon. The Praise the Lord. He got the water baptism, and he went into the wilderness of suffering. 
because Israel got baptized at the Red Sea and then they went into the wilderness of suffering. And at the end of the suffering, God came down Mount Sinai. Amen? Yes, the, God came down Mount Sinai. At the end of Christ's suffering, who came down? Angels came down and ministered to him. Y'all are following the pattern? Mm -hmm. But just before the angels came down and ministered to Christ, he was tested how many times? Three. Before God came down on Mount Sinai, they were tested how many times? Three days. Mm -hmm. God says, prepare yourself what? Three days. Yeah. Everyone's following? Yeah. I want us, now I'm going to tie that to Daniel 10. I want us to see how that is connected to Daniel 10 and 11. And that's where we're going to go to. Daniel had both of them at the same time. He had the same thing. All right, go with me now to Daniel 10. Go ahead, Swindon. Yes. He was also tempted with presumption, and as the truth said, he shall be the son of God. I mean, he saved himself. How can how can couldn't he save others? All Amen. Of was was to, for him to presume upon the call of God, and the last thing was Satan himself, the wrath of God. Amen. In the ninth hour, he was in that cloud, and by himself, he was exposed to the Satan's full fury in that cloud. So he did it in the beginning, only to demonstrate that's what you do. That's what you're going to do at the end. Amen. And I'm a, I want us to see this like what he said. As soon as you get the, the rain at the Sunday law, where are you? Immediately in the wilderness. As soon as you get it, you're led into the wilderness as the Sunday law. And then you got to wait for another one at the end, but there's going to be a three test again at the end, uh, like Sunday was saying, and then you're going to get another full outpouring. What the Lord is teaching us, man, we're going to need his presence like never before. Because it's going to be a, a serious battle, and he's going to come, and he's going to come at different times to give us water to continue to strengthen us to, to to keep going forward. But we have to understand, we have to know his voice whenever he comes to do that, separate from the enemy's voice. Everyone's following. Mm -hmm. He did the same thing to Abraham. There's so many scriptures that we can bring together, but I'm I'm not going through that. I'm going to use that to now walk into Daniel and then go on to 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 Daniel 11. Daniel 10 and 11. And let's look at Daniel. I'm just going to mention Daniel 10. I'm not going to read it. Remember, but before this, look at Daniel 10 verse 1. Actually, I want to read this verse. It says, In the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, a thing was revealed unto Daniel, whose name was called Belshazzar. And the thing was true, but the time appointed was long. And he understood the thing and had understanding of the vision. No, no, that's not the slide. I, I said I was reading Daniel 10. Sorry if I didn't mention that. Um, I'm reading Daniel 10, then we're going to jump right into the slide. All I wanted to see was these connections that, that, that we make, that I pray that everyone is seeing by just bringing these stories together that we're familiar with. Amen. Simply bringing these stories, there's so many other stories that, that we could have connected to this. But when you go to Daniel, Daniel, he received the former and the latter right there in that, in, in that book. How many times did the angel touch him? Former rain, Right? But Daniel was anointed right there in chapter in verse 1. He said he understood. Y'all are following? He came there with an understanding, and because of, that, because of that anointing, because of Daniel, the two on the walk to Emmaus, because of that understanding, Christ now opens their eyes so that they can see where they are, and so that they can see that today this scripture is fulfilled in your ears, and their response was, the Lord is risen indeed. Amen? Amen. That's, that was their response. And Daniel now, he's having, having an experience I'm only bringing this out to show that Daniel 11 comes by God giving us a personal experience with him. Daniel is having his own revelation from, from God. Um, thank you. Daniel is, having his, Daniel is having his own revelation from God for himself, and this is also supposed to be our experience. So as we go through Daniel 11, what I'm hoping that we will, what we will uh, gain from that is how much we really need to understand it. But at the same time, I want, to, um, I want us to see that we have to come there with a level of understanding. And that's why the Lord here was opening up things to us so that we can come here with a level of understanding so that he can show us things to come. Amen. Amen? We're going to really see some things to come in the, next, in, in, the, in the next few, I don't know when, but he's going to open up some really tremendous things and we have to be prepared and ready for these things that he's going to open up. Amen? So let us go on to now Daniel 11. Let us go to Daniel 11 in our notes. Daniel 11 in our notes.
So I, I just pray that as we walk through that, that that's something that, that we all can see and recognize right now, that we really are at this point um, at the midnight cry. And I, I can't mark it other than I, I, from recognizing in the scriptures that it's, a, it's, it's as we see the Bible opening up to our understanding of the Lord giving us um, the insights on these things. So now let's look at 1T326. It says, the present truth is not difficult to be what? To be understood. And the people whom God is leading will be united upon this broad, firm platform. This broad, firm, firm platform. Going on now. We went over this the last time we were going over Daniel. And Daniel, we opened up with Daniel showing the importance of studying Daniel 11. That's where we left off. And we were going over the, the signal bell. And what we were showing was how that Daniel 11 is a signal. And it, it's a signal to let it to indicate where Christ is in the movements in relation to the, to the, to the most holy place in the heavenly sanctuary. Everyone rem remembers? Okay. And we were showing, I'm just going to go through these slides because we're familiar with signal. And one of those signal was um, signal is um, eminent, remarkable, me memorable, distinguished from what is ordinary. So Daniel 11 is not an ordinary revelation. And we, what we were going over was Gabriel says, I come to show you what's noted in the scripture of truth. And, and, and the Bible says, sanctify them through thy truth. So Daniel 11 is the vision that's going to sanctify us. And that's what was happening to Daniel. That was the experience he was having. At, go ahead. Amen. Michael. Amen. And going on now, we went through signals, and one of the things we came to, it was the ringing of the bells. And we, we went to Exodus to show that the high priest, he had on the hem of his garment a bell and a pomegranate. And, and the bell and the pomegranate, while he was inside, the people were outside listening for the sound. Me And the sounds is the events that transpire. And by following these events that we will come to recognize, then we will... Um, by following these events that we come to recognize, we can follow his movements in the heavenly sanctuary or the plans in which he's doing. And one of those movements as he's coming, by the grace of God, we're going to go over. All of this is tied to Ezekiel, Isaiah, Jeremiah, all of the Bible and um, these movements. And um, Swinon will cover some of this. And one of this is the, cl is the clouds that we're going to have to see when, um, when the time comes. And these clouds are angels. But we're not going to go through that right now. So, Daniel 11, it says, Notwithstanding the fact that Gabriel gives a plain narrative, the very words he uses and the facts which he selects from the multitude of events which actually transpired have a significance in reading God's word in any of its parts. There is first to be found the story which lies on the surface and sec secondly, the deeper meaning which is just as truly there. So when you read Daniel 11, it's a plain narrative. But that plain narrative is designed to show us something that's deeper, that, that's truly there. It's, showing, it's taking our minds from earth up to heaven. Everyone's following? Yeah. Okay, so, that's, so the events in Daniel 11 are actually synchronized with events that happen in heaven. And this is where we left off the, the last time. Um, and we just want to read this quote from GC 488.2. It says, The precious hours, instead of being given to pleasure to display or to gain seeking should be devoted to an earnest, prayerful study of the word of truth. The subject of the sanctuary and the investigative judgment should be clearly understood by the people of God. All need a knowledge for themselves of the position and work of their great high priest. Otherwise, it will be impossible for them to exercise the faith which is essential at the time or to occupy the position which God designs them to fit. So notice what she said, we, we all need for ourselves the position and the work of our high priest. And that was the bell and the pomegranate. The bell and the pomegranate gives us the, posi the position and the work of our great high priest. So going on to this quote now, we read this last time. Um, just jump down to the, to the underlying part where it says, how important then, actually I'll read the whole thing. Thus momentous are the events introduced by the standing up of Michael, and he thus stands up or takes the kingdom, marking the introduction of this decisive period in human history. Now to the bowl. How important then 
that we have a knowledge of his position, that we may be able to trace the progress of his work and understand when, when that thrilling, thrilling moment draws near. Amen? Amen? So we have to recognize when this moment draws near. But it says, but how are we to know this? How are we to determine what is transpiring in the far off heaven of heavens? In the sanctuary above, God has been so good as to place the means of knowing this in our hands. When certain great events take place on earth, he has told us what events synchronizing with them occur in heaven. By, by things which are seen, we thus learn of things that are unseen. As we look through nature up to nature's God, so through, so through terrestrial phenomena and events which, which, which we trace, great movements in the heavenly world, um, when the king of the north pl plants the tabernacles of his palace between the seas in the glorious holy mountain, a movement for which we already behold the initial steps, then Michael our Lord stands up. So when the king of the north plants the tabernacles of his palace, then Michael stands up synchronizing with that event. And when America makes a Sunday law, Revelation 18 comes synchronizing with that event. A amen? amen? Because here is a movement that's to go to all the world, um, telling them to receive a, a mark. Well, here's God's movement. That's to go to all the world, telling them to receive a mark. And both these two movements are going to be going to all the world. But we all have to come there anointed. Amen? We all have to come there as sons of God, understanding how God works in the government of heaven so that we can make the moves that we need to make when that crisis comes. And it's smoke all around us and we can't see but it's okay. We can hear by faith the bell and the pomegranate. Amen? It's by faith we're going to hear the voice in heaven. Go that way. Go this way. That was fulfilled. That wasn't fulfilled. That's not the sign. That's the sign. Amen? It's, it's really going to be that real of an experience where God is going to tell you, that's it. That's that. No, it's not that. This is it. And, but where do we begin to learn these things? Now. Right back here. Amen? Right back here is where we, we, we should be learning, these, learning the voice of God, distinguishing it from the, the voice of a stranger. Amen. Synchronize. I'm going to jump over that. Um, we went over this last time, and now we're going to go into Daniel 11.40, um, the, the, the sequence of events following in this chapter. So let's go on. It says, truth. We, we had read this quote the other day. Um, just go to the bowl. He should understand the nature of the, of the two principles that are contending for supremacy and should learn to trace their working through the records of history and prophecy. Daniel 10 opens up with the two contending principles, Christ versus Satan. So what is the Lord teaching us? That's the only time in the book of Daniel where he shows you Christ and Satan. So that means the whole last vision, it's Christ and Satan. So every prophecy in there, it's Christ and Satan. These are the two opposing principles that's working through Daniel 11. So whatever you see, what Romario went over, whatever you see the papacy do, Christ is doing the same thing. Amen. Whatever you see this do, why is that happening? Because Luke, Satan is counterfeiting who? Christ. He's trying to counterfeit his movement. So this is why the, the, these two antagonist, antagonistic principle, but God is going to, just like Daniel 11 is plain, choosing Christ is also going to be plain because he's going to say Sabbath, Sunday. It's very plain. Amen? It's a very plain day, and this is the truth. But Daniel 11 is what's going to sanctify the people of God in that time. So let's look at Daniel 11.40. It says, And at the time of the end shall the king of the south push at him, and the king of the north shall come against him like a whirlwind with chariots and with horsemen and with many ships. And he shall enter into the countries and shall overflow and pass over. The scenes connected with the working of the man of sin are the last features plainly revealed in this earth's history. Amen? All right, so let's go on. The condition of things in the world shows that troublous times are right upon us. The daily papers are full of indications of a terrible conflict in the near future. Bold robberies are frequent, uh, frequent of a frequent occurrence. Strikes are what? Common. Thefts and murders are committed on every hand. Men possessed of demons are taking the lives of men, women, and little children. Men have become infatuated with vice 
and every species of evil prevails. Is this what we're seeing? Yeah. Okay, so I um, have an image there to show us some of the things that's taking place. And what the Lord has brought to mind is Matthew 24. Christ says, um, he get, we went over this, he showed the signs that's leading down to Jerusalem's end, to lead and point into the destruction of Jerusalem. But Christ says, when you shall see all these things, and I really like that word, he says, when you shall see all the famines, pestilence, nations against nation, wars and rumors of wars, and, and all he, he lists a few different things, and he's saying to us, when we see them all at one time, then know that the desolation is near. And literally, pick out famine, pick out flood, pick out fire, pick out war, rumors of war, tornadoes, earthquakes. Are we seeing all of the pestilence? Are we seeing all at this one time? Because something big and decisive is about to take place. And, yeah. and that's why I say, where are we? Right at the midnight cry. We, sh we should be seeing what's about to take place and what's about. We should be seeing the clouds coming over the city. We should be seeing the destroying angel. How do I know we should be seeing the destroying angel? Because Cestius was the destroying angel. Yeah. Amos, Cestius was the cloud. A cloud is a sign. And cr yes, uh, that's what a cloud is. Cestius was the cloud that the, that the people were to see and they were to get out. So what am I saying? Some way, somehow, there's a cloud right here. There's angels that, that, that gathered that, that gather that we should see. Everyone's following? Mm -hmm. That we should see and it's pointing to the sign that we're going to see down here. The cloud, which is the destruction. Amen. The clouds, are, the clouds are gathering, and that's why I'm encouraging us to really search the scriptures and to really plead with God to open up your understanding. To, he will guide you. I believe he will guide you if you ask him. He said, if any man will live to do of the will, he shall know of the doctrine. Amen. And, if, um, and Christ says, the truth shall make you free. Daniel 11 is the truth that makes people free if they want this freedom. Amen. Amen. If you want this freedom, and I love it because Daniel 11.3, that's what set us free right here. It was, is the understanding of Daniel 11.3 that set us free from that wrong course that people were on. And, as, and what is Christ doing on the two to a walk to me? He's setting them free that whole way down to this point. Once they were set free and they saw that they were set free from something, from their, from their lack of understanding of the scriptures, they went into the wilderness. Now they're tested by suffering to see if they're going to do the work of seeking out their brethren. They, gave, they left their comfortable home and they went to go do the Lord's work. Amen? That's what they did. They left all that they had. That's what the Bible teaches in Luke 20. They left everything and they went forward and they did the work of seeking to save that which was lost. Amen? So what is that saying to us? That's what we're going to have to be doing. We're going to have to, we're going to, have to decide, are we going to go forward and doing the Lord's work, trusting that Christ, just like he was with the two on the walk to Emmaus, he's going to be right by our side, opening up the way for us, just like he was on the two on the walk to Emmaus at the Red Sea, Moses and the people. That's the two on the walk to Emmaus. Everyone's following? Yeah. Moses and the people is the two on the walk to Emmaus, and Christ was right by their side, leading them through the Red Sea. Isn't that beautiful how to understand the scriptures? Yeah. That, 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 the, two on the, the two on the walk to Emmaus is only a symbol of the people of God. So they represent all the people of God. Amen? Just like Moses and Israel represent all the people of God. Moses was a symbol representing the hidden Christ, and Christ was in the cloud, the, what the people can't see. But they can see the light, even though they cannot physically see him, they can see the light and they can hear the voice saying, go forward. Amen? And that's what the Lord wants us to see and hear. So I'm, I'm tying all of this with Daniel 11 because that's literally what Daniel 11 is all about. Amen? So go, let's go back now to this note. It says, we have no time to lose. Troublous times are before us. The world is stirred with the spirit of war. Soon the scenes of what? Trouble spoken of in the prophecies will take place. The prophecy of the 11th of Daniel has nearly reached its complete fulfillment. Much of the history that has taken place in fulfillment of this prophecy will be what? I like this. So she says, most of the histories, where? Which, which verse is she talking about? 
36. Okay, verses 30 to 36. But she also says the whole chapter is repeated, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But she specifically, specifically highlights 30 to 36. And if she specifically highlighted, it's important for us to understand 30 to 36. Because she, God, the Holy Spirit, made her pick out that part. So, that, so that's a truth that's going to be opposed very severely. Amen? So, so go on. It says, in the 30th verse, a power is spoken of that shall be grieved and return and have indignation against the Holy Covenant. So shall he do. He shall even return and have intelligence with them that forsake the Holy Covenant. Do y'all see what this is talking about? Because Christ is going to, Christ is setting us free with the Bible. Satan is going to be grieved with the Bible. Amen. He's going to have indignation against the Bible. So he's going to go forth with those that forsake the Bible and to make war against those that hold to the Bible. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. So basically, our freedom is what unites the world. Y'all follow? Because Christ says the word is not you they hate, it's who? Me they hate. So this freedom is going to unite, is going to bring the enemies of God to, to, to together. And that's why we have to buckle up and, and, and prepare ourselves for this um, serious conflict. But going on, it says, in the 30th verse of Paul's grief, I read that. Let's go on to this next one. Verse 31. Um, she, she quotes verse 31 to 36. And she says, scenes similar to those described in these words will what? Will take place. So Swindon went over this some time ago. He went over these scenes. And I'm, as I go through it, I'm going to try to joggle our memory to, to, to refresh our minds into, to these scenes so that we can recognize Daniel 11.40 that it really was fulfilled in our time. Mm -hmm. And by recognizing that this was fulfilled, it's designed to give us that faith. Sure. I need to understand this. Amen. Amen. So go on. It says... Um, we see evidence that Satan is fast obtaining the what? Control of human minds. What did we see in 1989? The mind of America was what? Given to the papacy. Say, so what should we expect in the United States of America after 1989? Confusion like never before. And what have we been seeing? Confusion like never before. Well, let us continue. It says, who have not the fear of God before them? Let all read and understand the prophecies of this book. For we are now entering upon the time of trouble spoken of. Um, I, 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 actually, I just wanted that, that part. We are now entering upon the time of trouble spoken of. And, and she quotes Daniel 12, 1 to 4. Going on. So she says we need to understand the prophecy of this book. Regarding the testimonies, nothing, nothing is ignored, nothing is cast aside, but time and place must be considered. Um, and this was written February 24, 1904. Why am I bringing this in? She wrote these words in 1904. So she says scenes similar to these will be repeated. What is she? And she's, she, she's quoting 30 to 36. Then where is she standing if she's saying scenes similar to these? According to Daniel 11. If she says 30 to 36 is fulfilled, then where is she standing? Past, um, 30 to 36. 36. And what verse would that be? 40. Verse 40. She's, standing 40 she's standing between 40 and 41. And she's calling our attention to this point that scenes similar to these will be repeated. But she takes your mind to, four, um, to 40. So I only have that in there that she wrote that in 1904, saying that, that she's long past, um, long past 1798, She's long past that history back there, and she's saying scenes similar to these will be repeated, and she's letting us know those had already happened. So by understanding that, we're gonna, if we recognize what had happened in 30 to 36, we'll be able to recognize what is happening from 40 onward. So now let's look at this. All that God has in prophetic history specified to be fulfilled in the past has been, and all that is yet to come in its order will be. Um, jump down with me to this part. The book of Daniel, um, John stands in his place. In the Revelation, the line of the tribe of Judah has opened to the students of prophecy the book of Daniel. And thus is Daniel standing in his place. He bears his testimony, that which the Lord revealed to him in vision of the great and solemn events, which we must know as we stand on the very threshold of their fulfillment. You know, the Lord just brought this to mind. The two on the walk to Maus. 
when Christ opened up Moses and all the prophets, and they went and they ran because now they, they saw Christ in the scriptures for themselves. They, 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 had, a, they, had, a, a, they had an experience with Christ by, through the scriptures. Amen? And as they got this experience, they went to go tell their virgins. But what did they give them? Moses and all the prophets. And then Christ revealed himself to them. So they got all three of the way the Lord talks to us is in there. Um, Christ, Swinton always go, go over this. He's a symbol of the Holy Spirit. Conscience, right? Mm -hmm. And then Christ, the Bible. And then providence brought Christ there. Yeah, yeah. So, so they recognized all of that. And they went to go tell their brethren to give them the same testimony. Amen. As they saw that, this is the point I want to make. That's what we're doing right now. That's what we're doing right now. We're going over Moses and all the prophets. We're going through Daniel 1140. And if we receive Daniel 1140 to 45, or, or the, what we went through in the book of Daniel 11, what are we going to have? An experience with Christ. Because how did Daniel 10 open up? An experience with Christ. So tied to this book is a what? An experience with Christ. And Satan was driven back from that experience with Christ. Amen? So understanding this, I praise God that as we're going over it, that's what we are actually witnessing. Amen? We're actually witnessing that um, at, at, this, at this moment. So going on, notice this verse now. The book of Daniel, and thus is Daniel standing in his place. He bears his testimony, that which the Lord revealed to him in vision of the great and solemn events, which we what? Which we must know as we stand on the very threshold of their fulfillment. Which might know? Must know. We must know th these things. Notice what she said. A transforming power attended the proclamation of the first, the second, the, sec um, the second angel's message, and, at and it attends the message of the third angel. Letting conviction, last, last, thank you, lasting convictions were made upon human what? Minds. So notice this. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the what? Renewing. So the first, second, and third is designed to what? Renewing. Renew the mind. Two on the walk to man. So what is Christ doing? Renewing. Renewing the mind. And when the mind is renewed, go tell it to the world. Amen. Amen. Go seek out your brethren that are in the wilderness wandering and, and, and wanting to come out. Tell them that Christ is risen indeed. Amen. Amen. That this, God is basically resurrecting Daniel 11. He's basically bringing, what, what does it mean to resurrect something? To, to give it life again, because Satan robbed this book of its power. Men, men, men twisted it, did many things against it. So now Christ came, walked us through Emmaus, and now he's teaching us how to give life back to these verses. Amen? This, this is literally what he's doing right now. He's giving life back to Daniel 11, 40 to 45. He's resurrecting it. This is the resurrection. This is the triumphal entry. Going through this, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. I, I really want us to understand it. I really want us to understand it. I do. This is the resurrection. I can't, this is the resurrection. Oh, man. Praise God. God is walking us through the Bible, man. He's walking us through the Bible. He's walking us through the Bible. Yeah, he's walking us through the Bible. Praise God. But, um, amen. Praise God. Amen. I pray that, I pray that we can all see it. Amen. amen. So it says, no, to perceive with certainty, to understand clearly, to have a clear and certain perception. That's what Christ is doing for us. Yeah. He's making us certain that what we believe is true. Mm -hmm. He's making us certain, right? And that we go forward knowing this is true. And as we go forward, he's going to bless our efforts. Mm -hmm. Amen? He's going to bless. Because what are we going to teach? The message that he's reviving. The message he's giving life to. Daniel 11, 40 to 45. Amen? Amen. That's what he's giving life to. Praise God for that.
a cloud of glory over and over the mountain of Moriah. And he knew that the voice of God, the voice which had spoken to him, was from heaven. Amen. So this is the experience. This is what the Lord is bringing us to. We must see that cloud and know that that voice is the voice of God. Amen. And as we go home and study these things out and search it out, I pray the Lord will give, give, give us, give you all, give us all this experience together. Amen. Amen. Is everyone following? Amen. Praise the Lord. So God's presence is here as we're going through this. As he's opening up to our minds, his presence is here helping us to understand, making it clear to our perception. Amen. Amen. All right. So let's look at this. It says, Sister White identifies the historical fulfillment of Daniel 11 as something which we should expect to see repeated as the complete fulfillment of Daniel 11 unfold. She especially highlights Daniel 11, 30 to 36. The pioneers and Sister White understood Daniel 11 was fulfilled from verse 1 through the first, through the first phrase of verse 40, which brings us up to 1798, the time of the end. Therefore, when Sister White speaks of the complete fulfillment of Daniel 11, she's speaking of verse 40 to 45, directing us to scenes and history which will be repeated. She isolates the history of these verses further by quoting Daniel 12, 1 to 4. Sister White clearly recognized Michael standing up in Daniel 12, 1 as being the close of probation. Amen. That's what she clearly recognized. As she's standing there, she says, these scenes will be repeated. How much time do I have? 20 minutes? Okay, thank you. So, and I, I'm taking this from the book that I encourage us to read, Times of the Time of the End magazine. Um, the Lord gave this revelation to Jeff Pippinger. God gave it to him. And God is confirming that he gave this revelation to him by giving it to us, but having us put it in a what? New way. Everyone's following? Amen. We're giving it a new meaning. We're giving it a, a, not independent of the old that it had, but it's new. It's a new framework in which we're understanding it so that people who hear this, their spirits would be renewed and revived once again. He Amen. Given a new body. Ah, praise God. Amen. And, and that's what the two on the walk to Maus, right? Because Christ was given a what? A new, new body. body. So he was given the Bible a what? A new body. So we're giving Dan 1140 what? A new body. Amen. We're giving it a new body. When he revealed himself, Thomas had to touch him to see that I'm still the old Christ. Amen. Just in a new body. Amen. There's, there's a lot of thoughts. And one of those thoughts is um, connected with that. Thomas had to, um, because he was a doubt in Thomas, he needed three times, right, to touch Christ. The Bible, conscience, and what? Providence. Those are the three things Thomas saw. And he received the Bible, conviction, and providence that God was really leading. Thomas, Thomas was no longer a doubter. He was now a man of faith. Amen? Amen? So Daniel 11, when you come to understand this, you're to be a man of faith in going forward and teaching, in teaching this, these portions of Scripture. Amen? Man and woman of faith. So let's look at Daniel 12.1. And at that time shall Michael stand up. When this time of trouble comes... Yes, three confirms things. Amen. Right? Three confirms things. Yeah, I, 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 yeah that's nice. Amen. When, when, when this time of trouble comes, every case is decided. There is no longer probation, no longer mercy for the impenitent. The seal of the living God is upon his people. When it comes, right? Within the time frame from 1798 to the close of probation, we should expect to see scenes similar to histories in Daniel 11, especially the history associated with Daniel 11, 30 to 36 repeated, right? And I want to say this. The Sunday law is not a time to prepare for, I meaning we're not going to prepare in there for the Sunday law. Everyone follow? The Sunday law is a time that we must have prior preparation. We need to be so thorough and so experienced in the Bible, the, our conscience, and um, providence, knowing how, know how God works, operates in this realm so that we can fight against the enemy um, when he comes against us with the threefold powers 
to, to destroy our understanding in those three things. Amen. Amen. The dragon, the beast, and the false prophet. Their teachings corrupt the understanding of those three things, right? Um, the, the beast confuses the conscience. The dragon, um, he, he destroys the Bible because when you go to Revelation 12, the dragon hates the testimony. Amen? Yeah. And, and the false prophet is going to confuse providence because he's going to do false signs. Yeah, Amen? So you see all three things right there. The Bible, the dragon. Um, the conscience, the beast. He wants to rule men's conscience. Yeah. Amen? And then you have the false prophet. He's going to give false providences and call in men to accept Sunday. But those who have a clear perception of the Bible, clear, clear conscience, <clears throat> eating from the tree of life, eating the right food, studying the right principles, will be able to discern the false providences that Satan is going to use men to bring. Amen? Amen. Daniel 11 opened. Do you see that we're putting a new framework to Daniel 1140? That's, 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 I, I, I hope that we can all see this as we go on. The Bible, conscience, and providence. This is what Romario went over at prayer meeting. Yes, the void. Amen. So it says, Pagan Rome's 360 years to rule the world had its counterpart with Papal Rome's 1260-year time prophecy. More important to our study, though, is that the dominance of Pagan Rome comes to its, come to its end just as the verse especially highlighted by Sister White begin. Do y'all understand this? America has reached its end. Once they united with the papacy, the end is come. The end is come. The cloud was already gathering from 1989. How do I know that Cyrus was at 1989? Amen? Nebuchadnezzar was outside of Jerusalem. Cestius was outside of Jerusalem. Amen? The, the angry you're seeking. But what does God do? He holds the cloud. Why? Because we have not understood Daniel 11, 40 to 45. So he holds the destruction. As soon as the United States linked up with the papacy, rapture should have came. Hold. Amen? Hold. A hold was placed upon the destruction. And God is now opening up our minds by faith to begin to see that destruction little at a time. Little until we're able to... In until we're able to endure what he's about to show us, he's opening up a little at a time. But we want to make sure that we, we get in. I'm t what I'm saying to us, the whole world is about to tremble. The whole world is literally about to tremble. They're going to tremble the whole world over. And many people, when they fear, Lisa taught this, people when they, when they get fearful, they tend to make the wrong decisions at times. Amen. But nonetheless, Christ says, fear not. If we understand how he works, if we understand the natural operations and we and we keep these things in our minds, the former things, we will. And, you know, something that 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 he teaches is that. In a in a crisis, when it's loud. It's 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 it's, it's, it's almost difficult to, to discern God. Right. Mm -hmm. But you got to listen for what? That still small voice. And, and so you got to hear that voice speaking to you in your conscience. Amen. You literally have to hear the voice. Miller, did Miller hear the voice? He actually heard God. Yes, God literally, Miller, go tell it to the world. I heard that. I'm like, wow, we're going to have that experience. That's what Daniel 10 is teaching. We, God is going to give us that experience where he's going to talk to you, and you need to know that he's talking to you. That he's literally actually talking to you, and you're going to be able to separate him talking to you from your voice. Romario went over this. From your voice, Satan's voice, and everybody else's voice. You're going to discern his voice. Right? Because it's going to be all three of those things must agree. The Bible, conscience, and what? Providence. They all must agree with each other. Amen? Neither one of them does not break each other. Go ahead, Sonny. Yeah, Bible amen. Church has been in a drought since that time, but we know Bible teaches that at the end, and once Noah gets into the ark, oh, a the lot of rain. Ended. Yeah, a lot of and rain. The rain comes in amen. full force. So if you're amen. in the ark, you're safe, and if you're not in the ark, then you, you will be taken away by the light that comes at that time. And that's why 
we, we should be, the rain already started for us from back here. Yeah. It's increasing, and it's increasing, and it's going to increase more and more until we, yeah. Outside the city. Amen. And God wants to bring them in. Amen. Well, God I mean, wants to bring. Those who already left. Okay. That. Like, um, I thought you meant, I thought you were talking about those outside the city God wants to bring. In. Those okay, in confusion. That's, that's yeah, I, was, I was talking about um, while some is trapped in the city in that drought, in that famine, yeah. there are others who have already made it out and they're witnessing, they're getting light on what's happening to give to those who, who the Lord wants to also bring out of that city. That's, that's okay. Yeah. Is everyone following? Yes. Is this clear to everyone's mind? Yes. I'm not, nothing is going over our understanding. All right, if it is, just let me know because I'll be glad to go back over that point. Um, I'm going to, how much time left, Sasha? All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to want to end at a good part. So it says, using Daniel 11, 30 to 30, 36 as an historical outline, identified by the spirit of prophecy, we note that this past history was a transition time for, for Rome. Pagan Rome was about to leave the scene of history as the ruler of the earth and papal Rome was about to step into the vacuum. That's what we're seeing. In verse 29, Constantine moved the seat. And when he moved the seat, transition now begin. It's now going to go from pagan to papal. So this is letting us know that that's a transition time. So Daniel 1140 is a transition time. It's a transition is taking place right here in these verses. That's what she says. Scenes similar to these will be repeated. So Daniel 11.40, a transition. So when we see the papacy and, 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 a, and a civil government, when they come together, America is being transformed right before our very eyes. Oh, is, amen. It's really being transformed. Uh, yes. Amen. Right. Amen. We should have seen the Lord getting ready to transition himself. From there to there. Yeah. Amen. And we should be seeing a cloud been gathering. Yeah. There's a storm and gathering. The yeah. And, and to, what is it? Them storming the capital is telling us what? The cloud is gathering. Yeah. The cloud is gathering. Some kind of judgment is about to come up on the... How do, I want to be careful yeah. what I'm saying. Some kind of judgment the Lord is going to bring. And I don't want to call down anything on anyone. But the Lord is going to bring something. January 6th was designed to show us the storm cloud is gathering. Amen. It's gathering. And as we get closer, I don't know if we see what's going on in the world. It's getting very serious. I mean, it's really getting serious. Not trying to scare us, trying to encourage us. Amen. Amen. Trying to encourage us to, to get into the Bible. Get into the Bible. Get into the Bible. Get into the Bible. Amen. So it says, Daniel 7, um, Daniel 7 addresses this very same transition. In Daniel 7, 23 to 24, we find that after the fourth kingdom arises, another shall arise. This is a description of the fall of pagan and the rise of what? Papal Rome. The fall of pagan, rise of papal. The fall of some country, the rise of another country. Amen? We're, we're in this transitional period. It's not strange what's happening in America right now. It's actually on time. It's actually supposed to happen. But God's people is behind in warning people that of what's taking place. We are behind. And, and, we're, and God is trying to slowly catch us up so that, like the two on the walk to Emmaus, when we see it, we'll run. We'll, we'll go tell it to the world. Amen? That, that is gathering. This compromise between paganism and Christianity resulted in the what? The development. So what's going on right now? A development. The development of the man of sin foretold in prophecy as opposing and exalting himself above God. That gigantic system of false religion is a masterpiece of Satan's power, a monument of his efforts to seat himself upon the throne to rule the earth according to his will. So compromise between Protestantism and Catholicism was, will result in the development of a new manifestation of Satanic power. Amen. That's what we're about to see between the United States and the papacy is going to be a new manifestation. A new kind of government is going to be ruling in this world. Compromise. To agree, to accord, to commit, to put to, to, put to hazard, to pledge by some act or declaration. Protestants have tampered with and patronized popery. They have made compromises 
and concessions which papists themselves are surprised to see and fail to understand. Rome can't understand that America's even doing this. They can't understand it. They know that we're opposed to the Constitution. They know that we're opposed to everything they believe in regards to the Declaration of Independence. They know that, but they're conceding to us. This is strange. Y'all follow? Take that into the to Adventist church. They, they, they're conceding to Sunday worship. They're conceding to, to yeah. They're con it's strange that the Protestant churches, this is strange. Why are they doing that? And, um, let us continue. Verse 40. And the king of the south, I'm going to jump, and at the time of the end shall the king of the south, what? Push at him, and the king of the north shall come against him like a whirlwind. How much time do I have left, Sasha? Let me see. Seven. Seven? Okay, and I'm going to use this point. Actually, I'm going to stop right here um, for, for this point, because this one, I would, I would need the time to explain, and I don't want to put another point on all that we just went over. So what we just went over was showing how Daniel 11 is tied to Luke 24, Luke 4, Exodus, the Red Sea crossing. It's tied to, um, I'm missing one. Uh, I said another one. I can't remember fully. I think I said another one. But Matthew 24 is tied to Matthew 24. And Matthew 25. And Matthew, yes, the parable of the ten, thank you, the parable of the ten virgins. All these scriptures are literally, they're all tied together in one way, shape, or form. It's just giving you bits and different pieces of the same information about the same event, about the same thing that's going to transpire, about the same work that Christ is going to do. Each scripture is giving you information of, literally upon the same thing. And as we take these things in, we'll, man, we will better understand the movements of God and how he operates as long as we use the principles in which he's given to us correctly. Amen. So this part where I'm standing, when the king of the north comes in Daniel 11:40, the very next verse in verse 41, it says that he enters into the glorious land. But the only way we're going to understand what the glorious land is, is if we understood what the glorious land was prior. So I'm not going to go into that by the grace of God this time. But Lord willing, um, I, I don't know which Sabbath, we're going to go into this point of the glorious land, some really wonderful and powerful things in it and that will really help us to understand and appreciate what's taking place. So all that we walked through and showed was Daniel 11, 30 to 36. I encourage us to go watch the video that Swinon did when he went over this, this particular portion and use that. And we're using that as a, as a marker to help us understand verse 40 to 45, because that's really what, what, what it's about, is verse 40 to 45. And the Lord is put, putting it together and bringing it together for us. And I pray I pray that we all leave here with a better understanding of, of, of some of these things in which we're teaching. I know I didn't go into fuller detail into Daniel 1140, and the reason for that is I want to encourage us to read the Time of the End magazine, mm -hmm. amen, to read that book. It, has, it goes into much more detail. I'm just pulling out like pieces that we can hopefully digest a little easy. Um, shall we close out with a word of prayer? Heavenly Father, Lord, we want to thank you, O oh Lord, for, for being here with us um, for opening up the, the Bible to our understanding and, and, and teaching us and instructing and guiding us. I pray, O oh Lord, that we can all have that experience and understanding for ourselves, that individually we can all, sh we can all share in what we're learning from the Bible and, and bear, testimony, bear testimony to it as well. Please help us. Please may you continue to, to be with us and guide us through, through this day. Please forgive us of our sins. Help us to keep this Sabbath holy, O oh Lord and help us to have a blessed time and fellowship together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.